Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, today we're back to working on our metal planer restoration, and as part of that, uh, I needed to make a new gear. Actually, this gear here, this is one that I borrowed off of a different uh, machine from a friend that has the same machine that I was able to copy. And in a previous video, I showed the process of basically where I had created a pattern. I sent this to a foundry, had this cast in cast iron. We took the cast iron blank, machined out the gear blank, which is right here. It's on an arbor, uh, ready to have the teeth cut. In this video today, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be setting up over here on my Kearney Trekker Model 3H horizontal milling machine. I'll be putting an arbor in here with an involute gear cutter that has the profile to cut these gear teeth. And then I'll be also setting up my dividing head so that we can cut the 41 teeth on there. This particular gear has a diametral pitch of eight, 42 teeth. Uh, I've already kind of worked up all the math, figured out all my calculations as far as the diameter, um, the depth of cut, all those that information that we need to know to get this job done. So let's get this machine set up and cut some gear teeth. So first step will be to get our arbor set up and get it going. I've got a horizontal arbor here. This is a one inch arbor. So the diameter of the shaft on here is one inch. And we're gonna put that in there. This is a 50 taper socket. It goes in there. There is a draw bar, which is basically just a screw that goes through this. You tighten that up and it just pulls it in nice and tight. Uh, so I'm gonna screw that in from the back, back here and get a wrench and we'll tighten that up in place. There we go. So my arbor is installed now. That's nice and stable. And we need to get our cutter on there. So the cutter we'll be using is an involute cutter. Uh, an involute is this gear shape, the shape of that uh, uh, gear tooth or the, the void in between the gear teeth that we'll be cutting out. And uh, these Involute cutters, they come in a set of eight for every gear pitch. So a gear, the size of the teeth is measured in a pitch. This happens to be an eight pitch. And uh, so for this set, there's actually eight cutters uh, that you can choose from and you use a different cutter depending on the number of teeth that are in there. Uh, and it more or less approximates that, that uh, shape that you need to give you a usable spur gear. So uh, as luck would have it, I've got a cabinet full. I've probably got a couple of hundred of these involute cutters uh, that I've collected over the years. And it seems like every time I go looking for one, I don't ever have the cutter that I need. And that's what happened here. I had seven of the eight cutters for the eight pitch, but the number three cutter, which is the one that I needed, I didn't have. I thought I had it. I actually looked on, I had an inventory list in there and I had it marked as having this gear cutter, but when I went to go pull it out of the cabinet, I couldn't find it. So either I marked it incorrectly when I did my inventory or it's laying around the shop somewhere and I couldn't put my hands on it, or I may have let somebody borrow it and I just haven't gotten it back, I don't know, but I just went and purchased a new gear cutter and I got this from Travers Tool Company. I uh, just went online, ordered a brand new cutter. Um, it was 80 something dollars. I hated to spend that money since I pretty sure I had one at one time, but that's what we did. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and put this on here. My Arbor has a, um, a key in there and that's what's going to drive that gear or the, the cutter. We'll put that in place and I'll just put a couple of spacers in here. Let's see. Yeah, I got to get those lined up on the teeth there or on the, on the um, key. Let me find another one that's got a key slot in it. That one doesn't. Let's see if this one will do it. Yep. And then I'm going to put a bearing on here. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna put a little bit wider one in there. My cats are running around making noise over there. And then we will come in here with a, a nut on the end. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put one more spacer in there and just get this out. Give me a little bit more room between the cutter and the, the bearing. And I'm just gonna snug that by hand right now. I'll tighten that up in a minute, but I always tell folks you don't wanna come in here and go wrenching on this when you got this arbor sticking out. Uh, the leverage can cause you to bend that arbor. So I'm gonna wait till I get my uh, support on here and then they'll be fully supported and then we can uh, tighten that up. Let me run my overarm supports out. 
I got a crank over here on the side. We'll pull those out and then we'll get our outboard support on there. Swipe that out, make sure there's nothing in there. And this fits up over the overarms. It's a very precision fit. Once you kind of get it going, it just slides right up on there. Uh, but it takes a little bit to get it on there. Let me tighten this up on the top. Okay. I'm going to squirt a little oil on this bearing. And then we will just pull that up over the uh, overarm bearing there. Right, like such. And that's just going to support this arm out here on the end. That will keep that uh, running nice and true. So let me go ahead now. I'm going to tighten that up and we will lock down the overarm supports as well so that they won't move in and out. So that should be fully supported. And our arbor's built. Next step, I want to get my dividing head mounted on here. So this dividing head actually has some slots that kind of fit down into the grooves that kind of self aligns this uh, up. And now I need to get a couple of uh, hold downs here and we'll just bolt this into place. I'll put one in the front and one in the back and that'll be sufficient uh, to hold it in. Let's get some T-nuts in here. Get a bolt here and tighten this up. And we'll get a wrench here and just tighten that up. Now that should be aligned right on the center of this uh, slot and we will get the tailstock mounted on the other end. So I said tailstock a minute ago. Technically this is called a footstock but basically it's just a support for the other end. It has a center in here that you can adjust in and out uh, to tighten up, loosen up, etc. I'll just leave it about halfway in between there. What I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, put my shaft in here that we're going to be cutting. Uh, let me get a key here to tighten up this chuck. Kind of run it down some. This is just a three jaw chuck. That'll hold the arbor that this is mounted on that it was turned on. And now we can slide that in and we will get us a couple of T nuts and uh, lock that down in place as well. So I'm going to temporarily take this out. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to slide this back temporarily. What I want to do is um, lower my cutter down and line it up so that the center of the cutter is lined up on the center of this tailstock and that'll get my machine lined up in the right position. Let's do that real quick. Go ahead and bring our table in there. I hope we got enough um, height. I may have to move that cutter out a little bit. Yeah, we're going to be fine, I think. So what I'm doing here, I don't know if you can see this or not, but I'm just looking on there and I'm moving my table up and down and in and out so that I get the center of that uh, center lined up with the center of the cutter. And I'm just eyeballing it. It's going to be close enough be within a couple of thou and uh, that's going to get us right where we need to be. And here with a flashlight where I can see it a little bit better. And that's good right there. I'm going to lock my table in and out so that it can't move in and out. And we'll lower this back down. Use the rapids. Go 
go ahead and tighten this foot stock back down. Make sure that center's good and tight and lock that back down. Now our cutter should be lined up on the center here. Get that close. We just need to touch off over here and dial in our depth. Uh, before we do that, I need to get the right plate on here for my indexing and get that sorted out. Now for our dividing head to give us the proper divisions, we gotta get the right plate on here. I need to do 42 teeth, so that needs, in one circle, I need to have 42 evenly spaced uh, divisions. Now this dividing head is a ratio of 40 to one. So you turn this handle 40 times and that will turn the chuck one full revolution. And uh, doing the math, what I need to do is I need to get a hole pattern on here that has 21 holes in there. And for each pass, I'll do 20 holes out of that 21 hole pattern. And uh, when I do a full circle, 42 teeth, it'll be one full circle, it'll work out just right. So the plate that's in here goes up to 20 teeth. I need a 21, so I actually gotta change out the plates. Uh, there's a six different plates, I think is what I have for different combinations of possible um, divisions that you wanna make with a dividing head. So we need to take this apart, change that plate out, and uh, we should be ready to go. So we'll take out the, the handle. There's a, let's see, go ahead and this here, there's just a clip. That holds this uh, little division sector on there. I'll show you how we set that in a minute. And then we got three screws in here. Let me get a bigger screwdriver. And that one fits a lot better. that plate out, put this plate in, the bottom circle there is 21 holes. There we go. Get these three screws put back in. And we'll go ahead and tighten it up now. That's one, two, three. Tighten up that ring. And we can go ahead and reassemble this. Uh, so we'll get our sector in here. And this little piece basically just is a, helps you uh, figure up that division each time. But uh, in this case, I'm not even gonna be able to use it. So I have to be real careful as I'm cutting these. What you would normally do is set it to whatever division. So when you went to this tooth, you would go around and whenever you hit this on the other side, you'd automatically be marked in there. But I basically need to go all the way around to the hole right behind the one I was just in. So um, we'll have to cheat it, no big deal. And put our handle back on. I need to adjust this so that this pin is getting into one of the bottom holes. So I'll line all that up, tighten up the handle. And that is in a hole on that ring, on that circle we want to use. So let me tighten this back up. All right. And now I should be able to go around and get into any hole on that circle. 
So what I'm going to have to do is just uh, pay attention to where I'm at. I'll probably put it up there, back it off a hole, then go around. I see. How am I going to do this? Yeah, we'll make it work. It's going to be easy to, to do. I'm just going to have to pay attention to where I'm at so that I go just one whole shy of a full turn is what I'm after. And that should give us our 41 teeth. Our dividing head is set up. And I think we're ready to start making some cuts over here. Next thing we need to do is go ahead and get our cutter set to our depth of cut. And while I will just say that this machine will easily cut this whole uh, cut in one pass. These horizontal mill machines are amazing what they'll do. And uh, it'll be no problem to do that. However, because I want to make sure I have it to the exact right depth, and the way I'm going to do that is going to actually measure across some pins. I'll show you that process in a minute. I need to make an initial cut all the way around, then get a true measurement of where I'm at. I know how far it's supposed to be, but we want to actually make the final measurement right uh, rather than just dial it right in all the beginning. I want to make a measurement and then actually measure off of our actual cuts uh, to, to, for that second pass. If I were making a bunch of these gears, if I was mass producing them, once I got it set, I could easily just go over here and do it all in one cut. Uh, but in this case, we're going to do it in two passes, just mainly because I need to get it set that initial time. So according to the math, I need to do a total depth of cut. What is it? 275 thousandths of an inch. I think what I'm going to do is we're going to cut 200 thousandths. That'll leave 75 thousandths for the last pass, and uh, we can get a measurement. We'll see how close we come up we're, uh, to that 75 thousandths number after we take those measurements. So right now, what we're going to do is touch off and kind of get a zero starting point. I will comment here that I've already done some figuring up. According to the uh, calculations, I need to be running about a hundred and between 130, 150 RPMs. The closest number I've got is 124 RPMs. And that should be the right speed for this diameter cutter cutting cast iron for a high speed steel cutter. So I've already got my speed set. What I'm going to do now is uh, come in here and we're just going to raise this table up until we touch off. Let me get my flashlight where I can see what's going on a little bit better. And we are getting close. What I'm doing is I'm just slowly raising the table up a few thousandths at a time until I see a chip. All right, I actually heard it right there. It's just barely touching on one tooth. So that is what I'm going to call zero. I'm going to uh, come off of the cut. And then I'm going to, using a dial indicator, we'll raise the table up 200 thou. So I've got a dial indicator set to zero. And we're just going to go up 200 thou, which will be two, two revolutions on that dial. That's 100 thou, 200 right here. And I'm going to tighten my table up. So that should be right on 200 thou. That'd be a 200 thousand step to cut. Should have 75 more after this first round. So I think we're ready for our first cut. Go ahead and turn our spindle on. Again, we're running at 124 RPMs, which according to my calculations is about the surface speed we need for that diameter cutter cutting through cast iron. My feed rate, I'm currently on seven and five eighths inches per minute. Uh, we'll see how that sounds. Should be fine. Yeah, it's cutting it like butter. We could probably go faster than that if we wanted to. I think the uh, the book said about 10 and a half, so a little bit faster than what we're doing. All right, we'll first cut. I will come in here. We're going to go one pin shy. And second cut. So with gear cutting, it's just a rinse and repeat. And we'll go all the way around this thing. Once we go all the way around, we'll take a measurement and see how much more we need. Like I said, according to the math, 
75 thou is more what we should need, but uh, we'll get an actual measurement and go from there. I really like working with this new mill, new to me mill. It's just a lot tighter machine than my old one was. Doesn't have near the wear in it. Um, and it's cutting great. I often get asked about uh, coolant or oil or something like that. And uh, while running coolant on a job like this would, would not be a problem, it wouldn't hurt a thing. Typically, uh, you just don't need a whole lot of lubrication when you're machining cast iron. Uh, it has graphite in it and it's pretty much self-lubricating. So usually when you're machining cast iron, you just run it dry. You don't worry about uh, any type of cutting oil or coolant. One thing that I've noticed about this mill, the couple of jobs I've done on it so far, is that my cutters are running a lot truer. I think in that other mill, I had a little bit of run out in the spindle. I never did actually check the run out with an indicator or anything, but I'm running the same arbors, the same tooling, everything on this one versus the other one. It was never an issue on the old mill, but again, this machine just appears to be tighter, has less wear and use on it, and uh, just runs better. I'm on that old mill. It was like one or two teeth was doing most of the cutting. On this one, you can hear it. It's uh, cutting on almost every single tooth, which tells me that cutter's running a lot truer, which is a good thing. Glad to have this new machine. should split the difference and wrap up our first round on here. Once we get this one cut, I'm gonna go get my pins and we'll measure across the pins, see where we are on diameter and how much more we need to finish this thing up on the next run. So one way to check, see how deep these need to go is you use a couple of gauge pins. Uh, of a certain size and you put them in uh, the teeth directly across from one another and you measure across the top of those teeth. Uh, this uh, method is well documented in Machinery's Handbook and it'll give you all the math to calculate uh, what these uh, dimensions need to be. Now, according to my math, um, this size pitch requires a gauge pin of 210 thousandths. So I've actually got two of those. I'm gonna put one under the bottom, and we're just gonna use a uh, micrometer here to come in and we'll measure this distance across those pins. And we're measuring, this is five inches, 725 plus 20 would be 45,000, 745 thousandths. 
So again, according to my math, the measurement should be 521 thousandths with the backlash allowment, allowment in there. And again, you can look in Machinery's Handbook to do all your calculations. I'm going to do uh, 0.740. We'll subtract out what our target is, which is 0.521. That gives us 219 thousandths. Now you got to remember, um, we won't half of that because we're taking half from each side. So we'll divide that by two, leaves 109 and a half thousandths uh, is what we need uh, to get in there to get to our final depth. So I think what I'm going to do is uh, we'll dial that in and take another pass and see where we're at once we uh, do that. So according to the math, 110 thou, and guys, I think I'm gonna err on the side of caution here and sneak up on this measurement. I'm gonna raise the table up 100 thou. That should leave me another 10 thou total that we need to take, assuming that uh, everything is right. I would rather just go ahead and make a third pass. I've only got one shot to make this gear right. So um, we're gonna take our time and uh, get there. I probably would be fine going the full 110, but this will be safer. All right, let me um, raise my table up, 100 thou. I think we're about 101, but that'll be fine. All right, I'm gonna make another round and uh, we'll get another measurement at the end there and see where we need to go from there. see that gear form really taken into shape now, getting more of the uh, final depth. I mean, we should be within a couple of thou of the final gear depth on this pass. measure it, see where we're at. And we are at five of uh, 46, 47 right in between those two. I'm just going to call it 546. We're shooting for, let me put that in my calculator, 0.546. And we're shooting for, what was it, 0.521. So it's 25 thou divided by two. We need 12 and a half more thou. So, I'm going to do that, dial it in, we'll make one more pass around, and we should be right on the money. That was real close to uh, what we had uh, thought we were going to need. If I had dialed it in, I think I'd have been about four thousandths too deep, so uh, this will be a little bit better. All right, I'm going to raise the table up, 12 thou, make another round, and we'll be back in a bit. Well, here we go, finished gear after the third pass and I want to check it. So again, I'm just going to take my pins here and we'll put them across from one another. Get my micrometer. And it looks like we're at about 521 and a half. So I uh, hit that within a half a thou. I'll take that any day of the week. Well, within our uh, tolerances. 
And with that, another job knocked out over here on the horizontal milling machine. Uh, one of my favorite machines in the shop. I think the horizontal mill is a machine that many people just kind of discount particularly in this modern day and age of CNC and everybody wants a vertical mill. Vertical mill, it has its place. In many ways, it's probably, if I could only have one mill, I'd probably have a vertical mill, but I just love my horizontal mill uh, because you can do jobs like this. And guys, uh, with that, that will be a wrap on this video. As always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that bell icon up there uh, once you do subscribe so you get notifications when new videos are posted. And guys, those comments and thumbs up are appreciated as always. Uh, thanks for watching.